As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. Israelites, we will get right into it. We left off with the Most High using the locusts, canker worms, caterpillars, and the pommel worms as symbols that represents the stripping spirit. The Most High said to his people that he would give us back the years these animals have stolen from us. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the pommel worm, my great army which I sent among you. All of us have experienced devastation of some sort. None of us credit the locust, canker worm, caterpillar, and the pommel worm as the root cause to the devastation we've experienced. How can the Most High give us back the years the locusts and the other animals mentioned in the scripture have stolen from us? When you use the language of the spirit realm, these animals represent unclean spirits that come to strip you of your wealth and devastate your life. Remember when the Most High used the locusts to destroy the crops and devastate the land of Mizraim? The Most High sent the locusts to eat all the herbs in the land of Mizraim, as well as all the crops the previous plague did not destroy. The locusts devastated the land of Mizraim. In the land of Goshen, where the Israelites live, were not affected by the locusts and all the plagues the Most High sent into Mizraim. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt." The Most High used the locusts to strip Mizraim of its food resources, as well as to devastate the land of Mizraim for refusing to let his people go. When the Most High said he would give us back the years, the locusts, the caterpillar, and the other animals mentioned in that scripture have eaten from us, the locust, the canker worm, the pommel worm, and the caterpillar represent the dark powers behind the unclean spirits that have stolen from us behind the scenes. A lot of people forfeit their blessings to unclean spirits and the workers of iniquity because of a lack of knowledge. The heathens are rich because of all the stolen land and resources they have taken from the indigenous black people worldwide. None of the riches the other species of mankind gain were obtained through family inheritance. The seed of the fallen have no inheritance in this earth. That is why the Most High divided all the land on this earth to Noah's three sons. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth, after the flood. The descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth inherited the earth. The seed of the fallen don't descend from the sons of Noah. That is why they had to steal, kill, and destroy to obtain the wealth they have today. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, the Satans control this world through their seed. If the indigenous black people would finally humble themselves and serve the most high in the spirit and in truth, they would be in control of their resources and land. The dominion given to them by the most high, the indigenous black people would possess. Because the Israelites and the other indigenous black people forsake the most high for the idols of the heathens, the dominion they had over the earth was transferred to the wicked. The scripture said the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. 
The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? It was because the descendants of Adam followed the seed of the fallen into sin, the dominion was given, not taken, but given to the wicked. The indigenous black people have a role to play in their demise. I've noticed that a lot of blame is placed on the heathens for the downfall of the indigenous black people. While a lot of Israelites refuse to acknowledge the role the indigenous black people played in their own demise. Even in this generation, many refuse to take accountability for their actions. It's always someone else's fault in the indigenous black community. When the people of the Most High stop forsaking the Father, he can return to you the years the locusts have eaten. When the kingdom of darkness come to establish covenants in the spirit realm, majority of the time they are successful because the people of the Most High have no knowledge of what is happening to their spirit in the spirit realm. Israelites, don't perish for a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Our ancestors forsake the Father to worship and serve idols. When our ancestors decided to follow the heathens, that was the beginning to their downfall. However, the downfall of the indigenous black people continue for multiple generations because of a lack of knowledge. Instead of establishing a relationship with the father for themselves, the indigenous black people follow trends. Some refuse to work out their salvation. Some Israelites are looking for someone to do the work for them. That is how the false prophets and the ministers of Satan are able to control the indigenous black people for generation after generation. A lack of knowledge is the cause for many people's downfall. If you knew of the promises the Most High made to the righteous, majority of Israelites wouldn't be perishing for a lack of knowledge. Let the truth of the Most High's words sanctify you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Animals in the spirit realm can symbolize unclean spirits. Cats in the spirit realm can symbolize witchcraft power within your household. Flesh-eating animals also can symbolize unclean spirits as well as the hierarchy of the devil. For example, a lioness in the spirit realm can symbolize a high-level witch. The larger the animal appear to you in the spirit realm could determine how powerful it is, as well as how much of a hold it has on your life. An oversized animal can symbolize a high-level devil, just as a tiny animal can symbolize a lower-ranking devil depending on what is being revealed to you in the spirit realm. The tiny animal can also symbolize a new devil trying to enter or has entered your life, but don't have much power as of yet. Keep in mind, Israelites, not all animals you see in the spirit realm represent unclean spirits. That is why it's important to ask the Most High to give you the interpretation of what you saw in the spirit realm. When the Most High give you the interpretation, you will be able to decode the symbols. A good example that not all animals symbolize unclean spirits in the spirit realm. In a good dream, some animals can represent wages and power. Joseph, the son of Jacob, had a dream where he saw his brother's sheep bowing down to his sheep. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. In Joseph's dream, the sheep symbolized the authority Joseph had over his brothers. Joseph started by saying they were binding sheep in the field. Because it was his brothers and him binding the sheep, the dream is informing us that the dream is about Joseph and his brothers. If Joseph saw someone else other than his brothers binding the sheep, then the dream would be talking about that person. We know the dream is talking about Joseph and his brothers because Joseph saw himself and his brothers binding the sheep. Joseph revealed that his sheep stood upright, symbolizing the power Joseph had, while his brother's sheep stood around and acknowledged the power by bowing down to Joseph's sheep. After Joseph told his brothers of his dream, his brothers interpret the dream by saying, Will you reign over us? 
And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. In a good dream, an animal can symbolize power or authority. That was the interpretation in Joseph's dream. Indeed, the dream of Joseph reigning over his brothers were true. After his brothers sold him into slavery, the Most High was with Joseph and he became second in power in the land of Mizraim. His brothers had to come to him to purchase food to feed their family due to the famine. When his brothers came to him, they bowed down to him just as his dream revealed. Joseph was the governor over the land of Mizraim, making him a ruler over his brothers. And Joseph was the governor of the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. The Most High used Joseph to lead the world out of a famine in his generation. As you can see, Israelites, the Most High made Joseph a leader over the land of Mizraim in the spirit realm long before it manifests into the physical realm. I hope you can now see the importance of knowing what is happening in the spirit realm. Everything that takes place in the spirit realm will manifest into the physical realm. The Most High revealed to Joseph of his destiny as a young man in the spirit realm long before it manifests into the physical realm. Prophecy are events that have taken place in the spirit realm that has a set time to manifest in the physical realm. The kingdom of darkness is aware of this. That is why they come to deceive you in the spirit realm. As long as you don't know anything about the spirit realm, they can rob you there and you will have no idea on why you're living a defeated life in the physical realm. The workers of iniquity and religion will keep you ignorant about the spirit realm to continue to attack, control, and rob you in the spirit realm. They will tell you to fight back in the flesh to rule over you. Animals in the spirit realm can symbolize wealth. The scripture said that Abraham was rich in cattle as well as in silver and gold. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. In the generation of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a person's wealth was based on their livestock as well as gold and silver. It made sense that during the time of Jacob, the symbol used in the spirit realm to symbolize wealth was goats, sheep, and cattle. When the Most High transferred Laban's wealth to Jacob, Jacob saw in a dream that all the cattle that were speckled would be his. That's how Jacob knew to ask Laban for all the cattle that were speckled. And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-straked and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Jacob, our father, walked with the Most High. Jacob Vala vowed to the Most High that if he would protect and provide for him, he would be his God. Jacob served the Most High, that is why the Canaanites feared him. The Canaanites knew he was a mighty man of the Most High. The testament of Joseph revealed that the Ishmaelites were afraid of Jacob. That is why they sold Joseph to a woman from Mizraim. The Ishmaelites didn't want Jacob to find Joseph in their possession. When I heard this, my bowels were dissolved and my heart melted, and I desired greatly to weep, but I restrained myself that I should not put my brethren to shame. And I said unto them, I know not, I am a slave. 
Then, therefore, they took counsel to sell me that I should not be found in their hands. For they feared my father, lest he should come and execute upon them a grievous vengeance, for they had heard that he was mighty with God and with men. The Most High communicated with Jacob frequently in the spirit realm. It was in a dream the Most High revealed to Jacob that Judah had an angel of might that goes with him everywhere. Due to Jacob receiving this information via the spirit realm, Jacob was at ease when his sons went to war. Our ancestors knew the importance of the spirit realm. As a people, we forgot our culture, our customs, and our God. Therefore, our people started to follow the heathens. In the mix of following the heathens, we forgot how to serve our God. Religion was the mechanism the Satans used to help us forget our God and our inheritance. If our ancestors honored the Most High and passed down our culture and traditions to the next generations, we wouldn't have forgotten our heritage and our God. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn for ever. Unfortunately, living multiple generations without proper leadership cause our people to lose our heritage, as well as forgetting our God and trading our glory for religion. Jacob saw in the spirit realm that the Most High paid him his wages in the form of livestock. In the generation of Jacob, their form of money was livestock, gold, and silver. In our generation, paper money as well as gold and silver represents wealth. It made sense for Jacob to see cattle as the form of his wages in the spirit realm. Bread, honey, and milk also symbolizes increase or wealth in the spirit realm. Israelites, you can't use the language of the physical realm to decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Use the word of the Most High to help you decode the symbols. While we are on the subject of animals in the spirit realm, I want to warn you about monitoring spirits in the form of animals. Israelites, witches and warlocks use monitoring spirits to spy on their victims. In the beast system, the workers of iniquity depict monitoring spirits in the form of magic mirror that can show the workers of iniquity whatever they want. Israelites, monitoring spirits are very real. Monitoring spirits show up in the physical realm in the form of birds, squirrels, flies, spiders, and many other animals. When your spirit is more dominant over the flesh, you will begin to differentiate monitoring spirits from animals foraging or existing around you. Monitoring spirits in the form of animals have a distinctive behavior that only your spiritual eyes can see. When you grow spiritually, your spirit will become sensitive to the wickedness around you. Curse not the king, no, not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. As you heard in the scriptures found in Ecclesiastes that the birds will go and tell the matter. The workers of iniquity frequently send monitoring spirits to monitor their victims. Monitoring spirits often manifest in the physical realm in the form of birds. Israelites, there are some symbols you will see in the spirit realm and you won't find scriptures to decode the symbols. This is where you have to trust the Holy Spirit in you. You will have to trust the voice of the Most High when he speak with you. Jacob, our father, trusted everything the Most High said to him in the spirit realm. Matter of fact, our ancestors, the Most High used to write the scriptures, they had to trust what the Most High said to them in the spirit realm. Most of them did not have scriptures to confirm what they saw in the spirit realm. Remember, majority of the scriptures are dreams and visions. The Most High asked the prophets to write everything they saw as well as everything the Most High said to them in the spirit realm to help guide future generations. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Israelites, I've said to you in previous messages that there are some things the Most High will share with you and show you in the spirit realm that will require great faith to believe. Sometimes you're not going to find scriptures that confirm what the Most High is saying to you. You must use discernment and trust the Father. If you're unsure, always look for the Most High's peace. A lot of Israelites are programmed to serve the Father the way religion have taught them. Religion failed to teach the people to walk in the Spirit. 
because many don't know how to walk in the spirit. They are always looking for a scripture to support what the most high is revealing to them spiritually. The most high said, if there's a prophet among you, he will make himself known to him in a vision and speak with him in a dream. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. There's a lot of Israelites in the awakening proclaiming to be prophets, yet they know nothing about the spirit realm. How is the Most High making himself known to these so-called prophets in a vision and speaking to them in a dream if they don't believe in the spirit realm and they don't know how to decode the symbols they see in the spirit realm? Israelites, this is why it's important for you to test their spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Israelites, the time has come for us to not allow ourselves to be deceived by the ministers of Satan. Just because a person memorizes the scriptures, it doesn't mean they understand what the scriptures are revealing. Just because they study the scriptures, it doesn't mean they were called. Just because they have many followers, it doesn't mean they were chosen. Remember, broad is the road that leads to destruction. Just because a person is born male, it doesn't mean they are a prophet. Test their spirit. Regardless if they proclaim to be prophets or not, test their spirit so that no one leads you onto the broad road that leads to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The prophets and the chosen of the Most High will be meek. The spirit of pride would not have any authority over them. With that being said, know that there are some things that will require faith to believe. If you believe in the Father and put your trust in him, he will lead you to eternal life. The Most High has put me in positions where I had to exercise great faith to believe what he said to me. Some of the things the Most High said to me, I had to stand on my own with no support from others for confirmation. As I believe the Father, I watched the Father manifest what he said he would do. Words cannot explain how it feels to trust the Father with all of your heart and no one around you believe. Then watch the Father make his words come to pass before your very eyes. I've seen the Most High show his sovereignty in my life on multiple occasions. Words cannot explain this great feeling. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Israelites, you will find yourself standing alone when you walk in the Spirit. Don't fail the test and trust the Father. I remember when I was being called a racist and my name slander for talking about the seed of the fallen and revealing the identity of the hybrids many years ago. Now so many are teaching about the seed of the fallen. Soon many will finally understand the role of the prince over our people. Right now, the spirit of unbelief has blind their eyes. Those that will inherit eternity will come to the realization. When the Most High speak with his prophets in a dream and vision, the Most High will use that prophet to serve his purpose. The Most High could use that prophet to do something new or to fulfill what has already been done in the spirit realm. If the Most High decided to do something new, whatever the Most High revealed to the prophet, he has to trust the Most High and know that whatever the Most High promised and prophesied, he will do. The Father said his words would not return to him void. Therefore, the Most High will use the prophet to carry out his will. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. There will be symbols the Most High use in the spirit realm, and you won't find scriptures to confirm. An example is when you see bees in the spirit realm. I know a lot of you have had dreams about bees in the spirit realm. In a negative dream, bees can symbolize unfriendly friends. It can also symbolize conspiracy. Your unfriendly friends are conspiring against you. You should be on high alert of betrayal and people gossiping about you. You might want to reevaluate your friend's circle when you see bees in a negative dream. Joseph had a dream that prophesied the dispersion of the 12 tribes. Joseph saw a vision which he shared with his children. Joseph said he saw 12 hearts feeding. A heart is a male deer. Joseph said he saw nine of the hearts dispersed all over the earth and the other three was also dispersed. Joseph said this would take place in their season in the last days. And hear ye, my children, also the vision which I saw. 
there were 12 hearts feeding and the nine were first dispersed over all the earth and likewise also the three. And I saw from Judah was born a virgin wearing a linen garment and from her was born a lamb without spot. And on his left hand, there was as it were a lion and all the beasts rushed against him and the lamb overcame them and destroyed them and trod them underfoot. And because of him, the angels and men rejoice in all the land. And these things shall come to pass in their season in the last days. The Assyrian king took 10 tribes into captivity. The northern kingdom went into captivity first, confirming Joseph's vision of the nine hearts being dispersed all over the world first. Judah was taken into captivity after. Our fathers was aware of their descendants being dispersed all over the world. The Most High told the sons of Jacob in the spirit realm. As you can see, Israelites, our captivity took place in the spirit realm long before it manifests in the physical realm. We are the generation living the prophecy the Most High revealed to Joseph in a vision in his generation. The disperse of our people happened over 400 years ago. The Most High used the heart's feeding to symbolize the 12 tribes of Israel in the spirit realm. As you can see, Israelites, animals in a dream can represent unclean spirits, wealth, and people. Now we will get into non-animal symbols many of you see in the spirit realm. You heard earlier in the message of bees in the spirit realm symbolizing unfriendly friends and conspiracy. The Most High can warn you about a betrayal as well. A symbol that can represent a coming betrayal in the spirit realm is kissing. A lot of you would not link being betrayed with kissing. If you go into the word of the Most High, when Judas Iscariot betrayed the Messiah, the sign of betrayal Judah Iscariot used to identify the Messiah to the workers of iniquity was a kiss. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And while he yet spake lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came. And with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Israelites, know that the interpretation of the symbols mentioned are general. Some symbols may have several meanings. It all depends on what you're seeing in the spirit realm. Majority of the symbols shared in this message are common symbols many people see in the spirit realm. A kiss in the spirit realm can also symbolize covenant. It all depends on what the dream is revealing to you. You're in the best position to know what the dream is saying to you. Judas Iscariot betrayed the Messiah with a kiss. So if you're kissing some random person or a random person is forcing a kiss on you, know that could symbolize betrayal. Colors in the spirit realm are also symbols. Everything you see in the spirit realm matters. Some of you probably seen yourself attending a celebration or a party and everyone at the party are color coordinated. Seeing yourself attending a party where everyone is wearing the same clothes or same color symbolize initiation. Some witch or warlock is initiating you into their coven. A lot of you witness these rituals in the physical realm. You have seen the celebrities all white parties. Those parties are rituals. Some of the party attendees don't know they are being initiated. Witches and warlocks can initiate you into sorcery without you having any knowledge of what they're doing. A lot of you were initiated into witchcraft and sorcery through family traditions and religion. Idolatry opens the door to witchcraft. You can't practice idolatry without witchcraft. They go hand in hand. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Majority of Israelites are idolaters. Witchcraft is when you use the powers of demons and idols to get what you want. A lot of Israelites serve the idols of the heathens, making their God an idol. 
When you give the heathen gods a sacrifice, you're making your sacrifice to a devil and not to the most high. Many Israelites make excuses for their sin. They will come up with multiple reasons unto why they're not idolaters, despite the scripture saying that they would serve other gods in the land of their captivity. A lot of Israelites continue to serve idols in the awakening. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. For some Israelites, they feel if they're not bowing down to white Jesus, but they envision in their mind that they are serving a black Messiah, they are not idolaters. An idol can be anything, money, people, the fallen angels, unclean spirits, your children, your job, and many other things can be an idol. Idolatry is not only associated with religious figures. If you worship the Messiah, you're an idolater. So many do not realize that the Messiah is the biggest idol of all times. Worshiping the Messiah is worshiping the creature more than the creator, just as the scripture state. The father said there should be no other gods before him. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. The Israelites practice idolatry from the beginning up until now. Idolatry never stop in our nation, which is why the Most High removed his people from his presence. We are living in the land of our captivity because of the great sin of idolatry. Duality is the mechanism the Satans use to deceive you. Regardless if the heathens disguise their idol gods as the most high, you're still guilty of idolatry. Even though religion deceive you into believing they serve the most high, Israelites, you perish for what you don't know. That is why the most high is giving you the opportunity to repent as well as making the truth known in the last days. To the Israelites that deny their involvement in idolatry, Another symbol you will see in the spirit realm that will reveal that the idols in your family is seeking a covenant when you see dead family members in your dreams. These spirits are ancestral spirits. Ancestral spirits are the idols your family serve. They show up in the spirit realm seeking a covenant by taking on the likeness of your deceased family members to get you to serve them. The consequences of worshiping ancestral powers are generational curses. Generational curses are also a sign of idolatry and witchcraft in your family. The Satans have many ways to deceive you. That is why you must humble yourself and repent daily. You may think you're not an idolater, no practice sorcery. However, the Most High is showing you in the spirit realm that idolatry is in your family and is affecting you. The Most High said, he would punish the children for the sins of their fathers to the third and fourth generation. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. If your grandfather served idols, the repercussion of this sin will show up in your family up to four generations. Your grandfather's sin will affect you and your children. If you continue in your grandfather's footstep by worshiping the idols he served, another four generation will be affected by your actions. That is how ancestral spirits travel in a bloodline. The consequences to your grandfather's actions are generational curses. The Most High put generational curses upon his people for a sign. The reason the Israelites are plagued with generational curses, they are a rebellious people. The root to rebellion is witchcraft and idolatry. The scripture said rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is like idolatry. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. To the self-righteous Israelites, humble yourselves. I laugh at people who think that they are better than others, especially our people who believe they so righteous and that they can slander others for what they perceive to be false. Little do they know they are idolaters and workers of iniquity. The sad part is that they don't even know it. 
Majority of Israelites who slander and come against their own are puppets for the kingdom of darkness. For a long time, I disliked my father Judah until the Most High said to me, you're no different from him because you come from him. To the Israelites that shame others, you're no different from the people you try to slander and shame. You come from the same family. You're no different from them. The Most High will reveal your secrets. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, Thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, what should come to pass hereafter. And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. Be careful on exalting yourself above others, especially when you're guilty of the same sin behind the scenes. The last dream I want to share with you that would show you that the colors you see in the spirit realm matters when the Most High gave Levi the priesthood. In the spirit realm, Levi saw seven men wearing white. And I saw seven men in white raiment saying unto me, Arise, put on the robe of the priesthood and the crown of righteousness and the breastplate of understanding and the garment of truth and the late of faith and the turban of the head and the ephod of prophecy. And they severely carried these things and put them on me and said unto me, From henceforth become a priest of the Lord, thou and thy seed forever. White in a positive dream can symbolize purity and holiness. In a negative dream, white can symbolize death. Remember the baker who had three white baskets on his head? The baker made sure to tell Joseph the baskets were white. In the physical realm, when a person passes away, their body is often covered in white sheets. Israelites, know that there are good dreams and evil dreams. You have to differentiate between the two. Ask the Father to help you by giving you the spirit of discernment. Always accept the positive dreams and cancel the negative dreams. The color red in the spirit realm can symbolize danger. Other common dream symbols I would like to share with you that can help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. A house can symbolize your life or the life of the person it belongs to. Each room in the house is specific to a certain area of your life. Your bedroom is an intimate place as well as a personal space. Anything you see that takes place in your bedroom in the spirit realm can be symbolizing personal issues. Cars, bus, airplanes, bicycles can symbolize your destiny. If you see someone else driving your car, this can symbolize that you're not in control of your life. The final symbol I want to share with you is police officers or military people in a dream. I've seen people share dreams stating that the end is near and persecution is upon us because they see military personnel and police officers in a dream about destruction. Police officers can symbolize covenant enforcers. In a negative dream, the unclean spirit that masquerade as an officer is coming to enforce the covenant they made with you. In a positive dream, the police officers symbolize the most high arresting the power coming against you, giving you victory. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. If you see the police officer arresting someone that offends you, or they attack everyone around you and not touch you, The Most High gave you power over the enemy. Never use the language of the physical realm to decode spiritual symbols in a spirit realm. Israelites, as the Most High increase your knowledge about the spirit realm, it will become easier to decode what you see in the spirit realm. Know that you're not going to know everything. Establish a partnership with the Father so that he can help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Don't rely on other people to do the work for you. Nobody is going to do the work for you. Not even the idol God called Jesus. 
The time has come for you to take up your cross and follow the Father. When you put your trust in him and lean not to your own understanding, the Father will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Israelites, there's countless dreams and visions in the scriptures that can help you decode the symbols you see in the spirit realm. Open the Bible as well as the Apocrypha books and read the scriptures. Ask the Father to give you the spirit of discernment as well as guidance through his Holy Spirit. Ask the Father, where should you start? Don't let the Satans deceive you into thinking that learning about the spirit realm is complicated. The scripture said to cast down every wicked thoughts and imaginations that rise against the word of the Most High in your mind. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Wicked thoughts come from the Satans. The Satans plant evil thoughts into your mind to establish covenants as well as to distract you from your purpose. Israelites, there are countless other symbols I can share with you. Watch the older videos I did about the Spirit Realm and the Spirit Realm playlist, as well as the Spirit playlist on this channel to help you decode the symbols. This is the real awakening, not the false awakening that is an extension to Christianity. You have to work out your salvation. You have to step up and take control over your life. When you make up your mind to serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth, the Father will be with you every step of the way. Israelites, you can't avoid spiritual warfare. All of us have to engage in spiritual warfare if we want to be free from spiritual bondage. Israelites, your dreams and visions are not given to you for no reason. The spirit realm reveals everything you want to know about the physical realm and more. Increasing your knowledge about the spirit realm will give you an advantage over your enemies. The people of the Most High need to deal with the spiritual bondage that has been a burden for multiple generations. Let go of the ways of the heathens and follow the Most High in the spirit and in truth. The time has come for you to walk in the spirit. And I will strengthen the house of Judah. And I will save the house of Joseph. And I will bring them again to place them. For I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it, and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them, and gather them. For I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries. And they shall live with their children, and turn again.